November is Lung Cancer Awareness Month, the deadliest type of cancer in the U.S. for both men and women. Thanks for joining us. I'm Joey Horta. And I'm Brianna Malloy. Digital content producer Sydney Eisenberg sat down with a local woman whose family has suffered as a result of the disease. She has more. There's nothing like the bond between a father and his daughter. He was my world. <laughs> he, um, he was a police officer and he basically just did everything for me and with me. So he's gone a lot and he worked a lot of hard hours, but he always took time to be with me, like at 11 o'clock at night when I came, or 10 o'clock when The Tonight Show was on, and I'd come down and say, Dad, I really need to talk. And we didn't have pause. So I would be talking to him during the show. And then, you know, so that was the type of father he was, very hands-on. But Debbie's time with her dad was cut short. He called me in December and he says, hey, Deb, he says, guess what? I'm losing all kinds of weight and it's great and my pants are falling down. And he worked out. He exercised and did a lot of stuff like that. And he called me and told me this. And I said, Dad, I said, that doesn't sound right. I said, have you been to the doctor? And he's like, no. He says, this is great. I don't want it to stop. Well, then a couple weeks later, he called me back and he says, Deb, <laughs> they found that I have a tumor on my lung. And I said, well, what's going on? He says, I don't know. I'm going to go in and check. Debbie's father was diagnosed with lung cancer on April 3rd, 2001. Three months after receiving the diagnosis, he passed away. At the end of March, he called and he says, you know, I think it's time that you start coming home. Um, and so I got on a plane and I called him when I reached Chicago because you can't go directly to Kansas City. So I called him when I got to Chicago and I said, hey, Dad, I'm almost home. And he says, oh, good, Dabby. He says, I really am looking forward to seeing you. They had taken him back to the hospital. And so we got into the hospital and that night when I got in, I went in and he didn't recognize me. So I was glad I got that last little talk. Lung cancer is the second most common cancer in both men and women, as well as the leading cause of cancer death for both men and women. We see a lot of lung cancer here in Waco. Most of lung cancer that we see is smoking related. But the reason lung cancer is the most deadly cancer um, is that you don't really have symptoms until it's pretty far progressed. Debbie's father is not her only family member to suffer from cancer. Both of her grandfathers, her grandmother, and her cousin, all smokers, all contracted either lung or throat cancer. How does that make you feel, you know, seeing all of these family members suffer from lung cancer? Is that a worry that you have moving forward? It's always in the back of my mind. I quit smoking because, like I said, when my, my grandmother found out she had lung cancer, my dad stopped smoking, and that's when I started. Brilliant, huh? <laughs> and so I started smoking, and I smoked heavy. I mean, like three packs a day. And I smoked for 20, 30 years. And finally, on, in 2009, I stopped smoking, and I haven't looked back since. In 2020, cigarette sales increased by 0.8 billion units from 2019. It was the first increase in cigarette sales in 20 years. I have several patients who have been longtime smokers who have quit, you know, over the last couple of years, whenever, who have started smoking again during the pandemic. The pandemic brought out a lot of anxiety and mental health problems uh, that were probably right under the surface that weren't quite manifest yet. And the pandemic really exposed those. And smoking has kind of come up in some of these patients that I've seen because of their stress levels. And the smoking helps bring those levels down. So what about e-cigarettes? There are some chemicals in e-cigarettes that have potential to cause cancer. They are generally thought of as less what we call carcinogenic than a combustible cigarette or a nicotine, actually smoking you know, tobacco. Um, but the risk is there, and I can't say that there's zero risk of getting lung cancer with these cigarettes, but I think it's everybody would agree that there's likely to be less risk of lung cancer with an e-cigarette than there is with a real cigarette. Last month, the FDA approved the marketing of e-cigarettes, the first authorization of its kind for the agency. However, Dr. Patillo says Central Texans should not run out and pick up a vape. The FDA made a, a good point to saying, listen, we're approving this 
but we don't condone this. We're not saying this is, you know, just like it's legal to sell cigarettes uh, in, in America and, and the FDA allows that to happen. This, that, that is what they're saying with these e-cigarettes. They're not saying, hey, this is, this is safe. Everybody start doing it. This is FDA approved. It's FDA approved to market and to sell these products, but it's not approved to be healthy or safe uh, alternative to not smoking anything. I realized how much time I wasted smoking. I mean, it was like I was either smoking a cigarette, just putting one out, thinking about the next one, and my entire life was wrapped around having a cigarette. Debbie is proud of her decision to put down the cigarettes. And even 20 years after losing her father to lung cancer, she knows he would be proud too. Do you think if he was here, he would be proud that you eventually quit smoking? No, oh, I hope so. I, I think he would be, yeah. Sydney Eisenberg, 25 News.